This is The Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, but the real star of today's show is the Next Level Racing GT Lite cockpit or chassis or sim rig, whatever you want to call it. Now, perhaps you're thinking, haven't I already seen this review? And the answer is yes, or kinda. That review is actually the FGT Lite, and this is the GT Lite, and there are some big differences between the two, although they are very similar. The GT Lite is an entry-level, collapsible, lightweight rig that is the least expensive chassis or rig that I've ever tested here on the show before, coming in at only $229. It is less expensive than a handful of wheel stands that I've been able to test on the show before, and this is a full chassis, and it does come in at $70 cheaper or less expensive than the FGT Lite at $299. The GT Lite is a complete cockpit. Comes with an adjustable wheel deck, an attached pedal base, and a shifter mount that can be mounted on the left or right side. The GT Lite is compatible or pre-drilled for all of the common sim gear out there on the market. Logitech, Thrustmaster, Fanatic, pedals, wheels, shifters, pre-drilled, ready to accommodate all of that, and it'll even work with some high-end gear right out of the box as well. The GT Lite is made of lightweight tubing, a fabric sling or cover, and a few super strong plastic parts, including their adjustment hubs that lock down and hold their adjustment. The GT Lite is indeed a light chassis. In fact, it only weighs 32 pounds without gear. Even with all this gear mounted up, I myself was able to lift it up onto this table to give you an idea of just how lightweight the chassis is. The GT Lite chassis will work for drivers between four foot and six foot six inches tall and weighing as much as 287 pounds. And as we mentioned at first look, the GT Lite is almost identical to the FGT, but there are a few differences that save you that $70. But again, many of the parts are common and it has a nearly identical look about it. It's made of the same lightweight tubing that forms a shape very similar to lawn or pool furniture. The tubing forms a frame and then a material is stretched between the frame, creating a hammock type sling for the driver's body. The fabric is a black Alcantara type synthetic suede that runs from the front of the seat all the way to the top and is supported by the frame. It has a breathable netting fabric down your spine for cooling and two central pads for comfort and to keep you centered nicely. On the top front, there is an X-Level Racing logo embroidered into it in three colors and on the top of the back, a GT Lite logo embroidered in white. The chassis also carries over the faux seatbelt holes to remind you that it is made for racing. The seat back is fixed in angle along with the rear legs that can be adjusted in up to four different heights for the rear of the seat position. The front legs use a spring pin to adjust them into seven different lengths and when combined with the adjustable angle affect the front height of the seat. The angle of the front legs is done with the Next Level Racing Quick Hub, a quick release tightening handle and a series of interlocking hard plastic pieces allow it to hold up to 150 kilograms of force. These hubs, one on each side, allow the angle adjustment of the front legs, the wheel deck angle, and the shifter angle left or right side. The wheel deck is held by a metal tubing piece that connects onto the left side hub into a plastic connector that allows it to swing in and out of the driving position for getting in and out of the rig. On the right side hub, the bar swings into position and it has a clamping mechanism to hold it in place. On the left side of the chassis, there is a Velcro strap with the Next Level Racing embroidered logo that helps support the wheel deck arm. The deck itself is a thin metal plate mounted to that arm via a toothed clamp that allows for a variety of angle adjustments. As mentioned, the shifter deck also mounts to the center hub. On both the left and right side is a connector that allows the shifter deck to slide in and can then be adjusted in angle via the central hub. The pedal mount is also made of this lightweight tubing and uses two plastic connectors to attach it to the main seat. 
It can be mounted flat to the ground or with its legs giving the pedals a little bit of rake. Mounted to the pedal frame are two pedal plates. Each plate held in place on the frame by locking levers and when loosened, these plates slide forward and backward independently to mount to various pedals and adjust the distance from the driver. So even after taking a tour of the rig and seeing all of its parts, you still might be confused and still think, didn't I already see this review? Again, the FGT Lite and the GT Lite are the same type of chassis. The biggest difference being the FGT Lite is dual position. It'll either be GT or Formula. The GT Lite is a GT only driving position. It also means three less of these central hubs and these are rather expensive I'm assuming. So it saved money on parts and there is the $70 difference between the two models and the biggest difference between them and the way they are made. The assembly process of the Next Level Racing GT Lite is as easy as it gets. For starters, Next Level Racing does a great job of giving you instructions. They're well written, they're very clear. They also give you all the tools that you're gonna need to put it together so you don't even have to run to your toolbox. And on top of that, not only does it come with all the hardware, but it also comes with all the hardware to mount most equipment as well. So you really don't need anything but your wheel, pedals, and this chassis, and you're good to go. It all starts by adding the lower legs to the seat with the supplied bolts. Add the wheel deck or crossbar to the seat, and then finally, attach the pedal plate to the main chassis. In total, the rig was built in less than 30 minutes, and then I made a few adjustments to get it dialed in for me, adjusting the height of the front and back of the seat, and then it was time to install my equipment, which was just as easy or even easier than building the rig itself. Like I said, it's all pre-drilled, ready to go. I took my Thrustmaster wheel, I took the supplied bolts, two bolts later, it's mounted. After mounting the wheel, you can adjust the wheel deck about 45 degrees with that tooth lockdown mechanism. There is no up or down or front to back adjustment to the deck. Also, I found there was only one next level racing quick hub position that actually worked for my driving position. One click forward was too far away, and one click closer was down in my lap. This is also true for the shifter adapter. It has no up or down, or left or right, or forward and back adjustment, and there is only one quick hub position that actually worked for me. It was also pre-drilled for common gear, but to use my AIO log shifter, I had to make an adapter. And that takes me to the pedal tray. If I think back to the FGT light review, I gave them huge credit or huge positive marks on their incredible pedal mounting mechanism. Those two independently sliding bars make it so that it can adjust to any distance of mounting for any pedal set. I swear, this pedal set, this pedal mount, will work for every pedal set that I have ever, ever tested and any that I can even think of or that I've ever seen out there. It's a genius way of doing it and it's an area where I hope that all other companies will kind of copy or use their inspiration for design when it comes to future pedal decks. But basically adjust those two bars to the distance of the mount for your pedals use the supplied bolts that came with the rig to mount the pedals, and then slide it forward or backward to the desired position that you want it in. The pedals can be mounted flat or with the front lift, giving them about 15 degrees of rake. So now with all of that said, it really comes down to driving. Can a $230 full chassis actually perform to the rigors of sim racing that I or others would demand? It all starts with getting in and out of the rig. With the swing arm opened up, it is very easy to get into the GT Lite. It has a relatively high seat bottom and there is plenty of room to get in and out with. Swing the arm closed and secure it with a clamp and you're ready to go. After making adjustments, I was able to get the chassis into a fairly comfortable position. The wheel deck could be at a slightly different height and distance, but it was in the ballpark and I was able to get the ideal angle for me. The seat back is sort of suspended in the way the GT Lite is built, and that actually allows it to contour to your body and support you very well. That also makes it feel comfortable when you first sit down. 
So as we drive, everything is pretty good about the Next Level Racing GT Lite, and I am somewhat amazed at the rig holding all of my equipment and ready to race for only $229. As we drive it more, it becomes noticeable that the wheel deck is moving as I drive. There's a fair amount of up and down wiggle, and a bit less, but also noticeable amount of left or right twist angle as well. It's here that the inexpensive price and the collapsibility come back to haunt us. The wiggle is not to the point of distraction, but far from the kind of sturdiness that an experienced sim racer would accept. At one point, that tooth clamp that held the wheel's angle in place did slip and it required a readjustment. But after tightening it down really, really hard, it hasn't moved ever since. The shifter also had a bit of wiggle, but I am using a semi-heavy duty sequential shifter. The wobble wasn't as noticeable while driving as the wheel deck because it wasn't in my horizon or in my view the same way, but it was going on. This movement was much more front to back wiggle than other directions. But the pedal tray, it was rock solid. Even when mounted on its riser versus flat on the floor, it stayed in place and it resisted the pressure of the Thrustmaster load cell pedals without any problems whatsoever. Once again, the pedal tray is the best feature of this chassis for me. And after hours, well days of driving, and after running a few league races in the rig, I started to get a feel for its overall comfort. As I mentioned, the semi-suspended fabric contours to your body well. However, without much in the name of padding, it ends up feeling a little hard after hours of driving. The padded stripes down the back did a good job of centering me in the seat but with the flat seat bottom, it lacked that racing seat feel of the sides holding you in place as well. With the GT Lite chassis being the least expensive chassis that I have ever tested, my expectations were somewhat lower than when comparing it to pricier rigs. In the end, it did a surprisingly good job of holding my equipment and allowing me hours of driving fun. And when I was done, the GT Lite folded up into a throw in the corner and hide it sized package, which will be a huge plus for some racers. So you've heard what it's made of. You've seen how it goes together and how it holds all of our equipment, and you've seen how it performs out on track. But just to be perfectly clear, crystal clear, let's go ahead and break down the next level racing GT Lite chassis with the good, the not so good, and the bottom line starting off with the good, and that being, it is inexpensive. Really good pedal mount, works with nearly every pedal set. Compatible with common gear. Simple, easy to use. Collapsible, good for storage. Easy to move, lightweight. Fits a variety of driver shapes and sizes. Includes shifter mount. Ideal for living room console racers. And now on to the not so good. There was a fair amount of wheel deck wobble. Adjustment hubs have limited positions to choose from. Wheel deck angle adjustment could be stronger. Seat back is very tall and large. Could have more padding. And now on to the bottom line, which I always like to take from the perspective of the intended user or intended buyer. I mean, if you're the guy with a direct drive steering wheel, this is not the rig for you. If you're the guy who uses really high-end equipment, your wheel rim might be more expensive than this chassis. Your pedals might be more expensive than this chassis. So you are not the intended end user. So when I really look at it from the perspective of who is this really built for? Well, it's built for the starter, the beginner. It's built for the people who have limited space in their home and have to be able to slide it into the corner or throw it into the closet if you really wanna pack it down super small. It's for the person who is on a very strict budget and has no DIY skills. At 229, this is the least expensive full chassis that you can get. I can't think of anything even really close other than the FGT Lite at 299 is one of the least expensive options as a full chassis that we have outside of a DIY. 
I mean, if you're serious about sim racing, a DIY wood rig, PVC rig, 8020 rig can all be done for 229, but it does take skill and you have to go through the frustrations of a DIY chassis and it's not gonna be lightweight, it's not gonna be collapsible and it's not gonna go into the corner or the closet. So there is again an end user that this is perfect for, it's just not that high end guy. Now, this also makes a great second rig. So let's say you have a dedicated PC sim rig, but you always want to be able to go play something on the console. Well, this will work in the living room. And I think that's really one of the most best suited end users or sim racers for this rig. Somebody who's using their TV in the living room, playing on a console, playing Gran Turismo, playing Forza, playing F1 2020 or any other great sim, but they're doing it in their living room in more of a gamey fashion and they want to go from the controller and step up to full equipment. At 229, it's an easy entry point for that user. And I think they hit a real home run for that. That driver, they're not going to be using massive horsepower or force feedback. The wobble won't be as severe. Maybe they haven't been sim racing long enough to know that stability of your wheel is going to be critical. This is a good starting point and if they really love sim racing, they can always go one step further. So I can tell you that I'd like them to beef this up, but this bar, now this bar, when it's opened up, I am a little scared that if somebody accidentally sat down, it would literally bend or break and that would end the chassis. So I would take a little bit of care when it comes to protecting the crossbar, especially when it's in the open position. And I'd take care to really make sure this clamp is seated well before attaching it firmly because you don't want to break anything or it'll ruin the rig. So there are a few areas that could be beefed up, but if it was beefed up, it's going to immediately leave that entry level point. It's going to lose that lightweight and collapsible. And there is a market for those features and that's who it's for. So again, it's not for everybody. It's probably not for you if you're a hardcore sim racer. And the last thing I am going to mention is the overall comfort. I do feel that without a little extra cushioning, that over long hours, that it starts to kind of scrunch me up on the back. It's a little hard to describe, but it's not as comfortable as a dedicated padded sim racing seat. And that's something that could be a factor for some people. But again, for its intended purpose, I think it does the job rather well. So I hope you've learned everything that you would want to know about the Next Level Racing GT Lite. I hope you found out whether this is the rig for you or perhaps the rig that isn't for you. That's okay. We all need to know what's right for us. If you want to see more videos like this one, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. When you subscribe, it lets us know we're doing well and we should keep making videos like that one. So be sure to subscribe, thumbs up, tell a friend, do all that good stuff. This is The Simpit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.